our government has maneuvered to push back the 2025 election to October 27th from its original date. This strategic move ensures that over 80 MPs will qualify for enhanced pensions, a decision that prioritizes political expendency over the urgent needs of citizens. Good afternoon, everyone. Fellow Canadians, our beloved nation stands at a crossroad where the very fabric of our democracy is being tested. This isn't about politics. It's about the values that unite us as the people. The values of fairness, opportunity, and a future where Canadians can thrive. Today, many of us face daunting challenges, skyrocketing costs of living, unaffordable housing, and a pressing need for environmental stewardship. These issues affect us all, regardless of your political beliefs or backgrounds. They touch the single parent working multiple jobs, <clears throat> the young family struggling to make ends meet, and the new immigrant dreaming of a better life in Canada. In the wake of Bill C-65 being hastily passed on June 19th, 2024, we face a stark reality. While Canadians grapple with soaring living costs and economic uncertainty, our government has maneuvered to push back the 2025 election to October 27th from its original date. This strategic move ensures that over 80 MPs will qualify for enhanced pensions, a decision that prioritizes political expendency over the urgent needs of citizens. As families across our nation struggle to make ends meet, this decision is a stark reminder of the disconnect between those in power and the everyday citizens faced by challenges faced by Canadians. Petition E5024 is our chance to make a stand, not against each other, but for each other. It calls for a vote of no confidence in our current leadership. A decisive step towards ensuring that our voices, your voice, is heard in the corridors of power. This isn't just another petition. It's a symbol of our commitment to a fair, more inclusive Canada. By signing 5024, you're not just expressing dissatisfaction, you're demanding accountability, transparency, and a government that works for all Canadians. Recent times have revealed troubling instances of scandal and deceit within our government. Eroding public trust and confidence. These issues impact us all. Diverting attention from re and resources away from the urgent needs of everyday Canadians. My friend and I have both felt the weight of these challenges in our own lives. She shared her story with me, one of juggling multiple jobs just to make ends meet. Her determination to support this petition comes from a place of deep personal experience and a desire for a better future for us all. In a recent statement, Justin Trudeau had said, Canadians aren't ready for an election. However, according to Abacus data, the Liberals are polling at only 24%, significantly tra trailing behind other parties. Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party continue to be brought forward on several ongoing ethics investigations and concerns and Canadians have lost confidence and trust in Justin Trudeau and the Liberal NDP government's ability to govern Canada responsibly and to show equality to all Canadians. Petition E5024 is your way to tell them just how ready you are for an election. This ends when the people say it does. Let's show the world what democracy truly means. Together, united, and unwavering in our belief that every voice counts. Spread the word, share this petition in your communities, workplaces, and show, social circus, circles. Sorry, 
Let's ignite a movement that transcends political divides and champions the values that define us as Canadians. Join us in signing petition E5024 today. Let's safeguard our democracy and build a future where every Canadian can thrive. Together, we are stronger. Thank you. Neil? Hi, my name is Neil Sheard. I organized the original Rolling Thunder 2022. And a friend of mine, Derek Noon, who's supposed to be in here right now, has just been banned. Came down yesterday. Class A. Could be 10 months, could be a year, could be two years. His lawyer is being notified right now. I just had to say that because Derek's supposed to be here with us today. The reason I'm here is because we're doing Rolling Thunder Ottawa 2024. It's supposed to be coming in tomorrow, but weather depends. If it uh, gets cancelled today, we'll find out. When I first started Rolling Thunder 2022, that was after veterans had been attacked on the monument. They were beaten in the streets, handcuffed and thrown out of, out of the city. No charges. They're basically kidnapped after being beaten and left out of the city. So we decided, it wasn't just me, it was my idea, but a lot of veterans, and I'm not speaking for all veterans. I'm not speaking for all veterans. I'm speaking for the veterans that were there. We gave back that monument its dignity. And I know there was a lot of times where we were fighting with the city saying you're going to be rolling thunder, uh, not rolling thunder, the Convoy 2.0. You're going to come in and you're going to park your bikes. I'm very sorry, but you don't see a crew cab on the back of a motorcycle. We said we were going to come in, do our monument, say a prayer, lay a wreath, run the bikes, and leave. And that is exactly what we did. Exactly. The city spent $3 million dollars. 800 police officers to guard our motorcycle ride. Three people were arrested. One, there was no violence. And I think two of them were done for breach because they weren't allowed in the city because they got arrested during the convoy. Three million dollars. 800 police officers for a peaceful motorcycle ride to give back dignity to our war memorial. Last year, I said we're coming back in. All I want to do is just ride around, no speeches. We gave dignity to the monument the year before. We just want to ride around the monument, rev our bikes, and salute the men and women that gave their lives for this country. The city said, no, we will give you one street closer. They gave us Albert Street, which they should have done last year, but, or the year before, but they turned it to Slater. So they gave us Albert Street. And they said, well, if you play by our rules, we'll let you have maybe a little bit closer. And I was thinking to myself, I'm going to be 75 years old by the time I roll around that monument. This year... I said, okay, tell you what, we played by your rules last year. Give us Queen. They said, no. They'll give us exactly the same route as last year. We turn it Albert. I want to know who's making these decisions. We've done exactly what we have said we did we did exactly what we said we are planning on doing every year. Are they still that hurt? 
Motorcycles are not going to stop in this city and stay for weeks. It's a big, loud motorcycle. Come in, salute the monument, leave the city, and go off and have a barbecue. But somebody in this city hall, or maybe in the government here, Honestly, I'd like to know who's in charge. Seriously. And it's not just me. Canadians want to know who's in charge of our government. We've got scandals coming out that we have traitors in our government colluding with China, India. Me, as a soldier, if I'd have been charged with treason, my life would be over. It'd be in the papers. If one of these reporters in here were charged with treason, your name would be out there. But as a, as, as a veteran, as a soldier, if, if that happened to me, my life would be over. But if you're a politician, ooh, that's even worse. Because if one of these politicians has access to our state secrets, who are they? Canadians want to know. Would somebody have to do with the Winnipeg lab? Anybody? We need to know. We need to know as Canadians, if we're going to go to the polls, are we going to be voting for someone who's in the pocket of China, India? And honestly, doesn't matter if you're liberal, conservative, NDP, block the green, your name should come out. If you get charged, we have the information. We will see you in court. Prove yourself innocent. That's the way it works in our country. If you get charged, you have to go to court to prove yourself innocent. Then you run for office. As you can see, I don't, I don't have a speech. This comes off the top of my head. This all comes from the heart. And who else runs our country? 2017, Klaus Schwab said he has penetrated our cabinet with more than 50% of the cabinet are young global leaders. Our deputy prime minister is on the board of the World Economic Forum. She is also very, very good friends with George Soros. Before she came into politics, she, was, she had a book deal, but then she came into politics. She would have dinner with George Soros. Who's running our country? So Rolling Thunder is there to salute the men and women that gave their lives to defend this country from what is happening now. They fought against tyrants. They fought against dictators. They gave their lives willingly. And that's why we're going back into that monument. Something else is, <clears throat> you know who politicians are afraid of? They're afraid of three things. I mean, and I mean they're terrified. They're terrified of a free vote. They're terrified of free speech. And up until about 10 years ago, they're terrified of you, and you, and you, the media. Now, I got a question for the media out there. All you media out there, you don't have to answer this. Why did you become a journalist? Curiosity, want to know the truth? Because I remember back in the day, up about 10 years ago, if you have a problem with, say, a business or a politician, or the law, or something you couldn't figure out for yourself, the last resort was, I'm going to the press, because you guys were the ones 
that would find the truth. Politicians aren't afraid of you anymore. And it's not just Canada. They're not afraid of the press anymore. I'm pretty much, that's all I got to say. But remember one thing, folks. God loves every single one of you. And he has a plan for every single one of you. You'll find it. It'll be there. And if you don't believe in God, you'll be judged. Thank you very much. Neil Sheard. Rolling Thunder should be tomorrow. If not, it will be on July 6th. Thank you very much. Can you clarify why Derek Noonan isn't here? Was he trespassed from... He's not been trespassed. So what, what, what's preventing him from... He's trying to find out. He called the, he called the, uh, the sergeant at arms. The sergeant at arms gave him a couple of seconds, then hung up on him. So his lawyer, Derek's lawyer, has been notified. Okay, thank you. So what is the plan for tomorrow? Because I'm just trying to get some clarity. And you are from where? Uh, city News. Okay. Uh, because you had mentioned that the city said you're going to stay on Albert this year. You don't want to do that, obviously. Understandable reasons. So what is, what, like, what is it, are you, are you going to follow what they said, or are you going to go around the monument anyway? Like, what's, what's no, the plan? No, we... Rules of the road, and they said that we we could next year, as in this year, we should get a little closer. You play the game, you get a little bit closer, a little bit closer. And I thought, okay, well, last year we turned it Albert. Say, I said, can we turn it Queen? Nope, can't do it. So I'd like to know who is keeping this exclusion zone going. Could you find that out? What is the plan going forward for like the broader convoy movement? Because I remember two Con years this ago, convoy? You guys did. It's, it's, it's never been a convoy. Convoy is big trucks. No, I get what you mean, but I'm just no, trying but to that's say. just it. The first year is a rolling thunder convoy. Convoy means trucks, and the media kept pushing convoy, 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 and everybody thinks convoy. Oh my God, we sorry, folks. Oh my Lord, the trucks are coming back. Carry on. Okay, so broader movement. Yep. Okay, what is the plan going forward exactly? Because I'm just trying to, like two years ago when there was Rolling Thunder and when there was the anti-vaccine mandate protests on the Hill, you, I don't want to say you guys because I don't know necessarily how involved either of you were or weren't in that, did your own newsers, did your own uh, communications, pretty effective at getting the message out. Now you're coming through the press gallery is this an attempt to try and get, apply more political pressure? Like, what is, what is the plan going forward? Because I'm just trying to suss this out. Okay, well, Derek asked me if I'd like to come over and speak because he knows that Rolling Thunder is near and dear to my heart, and it should be to Canadians, about the fact that veterans and motorcycles just want to drive around and let people know this is happening. There's no... That rant I went on about the government, right? Right? That's why we have 5024. But from now on, okay, Rolling Thunder is supposed to come in, come in from Antrim, come up. I was supposed to go around the monument, or we were supposed to go, but we turn it to Albert, rev our bikes, salute that monument, get back on the 417, out of town, go to a barbecue. That's it. Every single year from now on, that's what it's supposed to be. Have you ever heard of Rolling Thunder in the United States where they leave D.C.? They go by the, uh, they're in Washington, D.C.? Heard about that? I have not. <laughs> okay, you might want to look it up. And what it is, it's veterans and patriots who support their veterans that have died. Big monster rally. Thousands and thousands and thousands of bikes showed up. And I would like to see something like that in our country. That's where it comes from. It rolling thunder. That's what they call it. I call it rolling thunder, Ottawa, because that's where our monument is. Uh, I've had my two. Can I keep? Uh, yeah. that's, all right. So, what what is the plan with the petition? Because every time we get a petition that has a lot of signatures that goes to the government, they write some blank statement saying, "Yeah, we hear you." And 
at the end. Be on and money. be on your way. Be on your way, yeah, plebs. Yeah. Right. So what, like, what? What is the plan here? Because, sure. Yeah, please. So, sorry, your question is. <laughs> what is the ideal plan for the petition? Because every time a petition goes to the government and it has something to do with something they really don't want to do, even if it has a lot of signatures on it, they write this blank statement about, we hear you, uh, we'll look into it, thanks for writing. If that happens again, like what is the plan going forward? What is the objective going forward? So with, are you referring to the past petition, E4701? It was the highest signed no petition. Yes. Yeah. So if that's the one you're speaking to, I was also the author of that petition as well. Right. Um, so it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It brought awareness across the country. It united Canadians together on a common issue. It did exactly, it was read in the House. The voices of Canadians were heard. Yes, we did get a response from the Liberal Party through Jennifer O'Connell. Um, you know, no, we didn't like the response. Um, the response pretty much told us, you know, we had... Um, we had exercised our democratic right in the 44th general election and that Canadians would have to wait until the 45th election. Um, so the purpose of 50, um, 5024 is, again, to have your voices heard in the House of Commons. It's to ensure that our politicians are hearing us, that they're listening Again, there's the, in the rules, they don't have to do what we've asked. And we were well aware of that. Um, you know, but forever, now in eternity, these voices of every Canadian that signed that petition will ring through the halls of these buildings. And that's a big deal to people. That's a big deal for Canada. Um, you know, it's, again, to bring awareness to the situation on hand. It's to unite Canada once again. It's to get that message out. You're not hearing us. We need you to listen. And if 347,847 signatures wasn't enough for you, then we'll bring you millions. And will that be enough? If they can move our election a week later, they sure as heck can move it a week forward. We've never, ever moved our election for this, this recognition day, ever, in 44 elections. Why now? Well, we know why. 80-plus MPs are about to lose their pensions. And I don't know about any of you, but the reality of real life is if I do a bad job, if I don't do my job correctly, and I get fired... I don't get the perks of that company. So if they're concerned about losing their riding, then maybe they should have been concerned about what their constituents were asking of them. Then maybe they should have done their job. Have you got another? Or? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so we know the... Some members of the official opposition have been receptive to your message, and certainly they would love to see an election much sooner rather than later. Have you tried, like, applying pressure? Because, like, to be blunt, everyone knows if the NDP pulls the rug out from under the Liberals, we go to an election. Have you tried to apply pressure to NDP MP saying, like, hey, sure. you know, like, people don't like this guy, right? Sure. We have had several campaigns of people calling, um, emailing letter campaigns. I personally have called several NDP um, MPs asking to have a sit down and um, an open conversation and dialogue discussing the issues that are facing Canadians right now um, and I have not received an email back no phone call back no nothing they will not respond um, and that's alarming that's alarming I mean your job is to listen and, and have your doors open to Canadians and to your constituents. And when you're closing the door and locking them, when they approach your building um, or when they phone or email, you're just blatantly ignoring Canadians. That's a big problem and a big red flag for the rest of the country. And so it should be. Have you had any meetings with any MPs from any parties? Uh, yes, I have with, um, you know, my own MP, Michelle Ferreri. I have spoken to Larry Brock. Um, you know, like, again, I work within, you know, the realm of I go through my MP 
which is Michelle Ferrari. She's, I'm from Peterborough Kawartha, and she's my MP. Um, you know, I, I spoke with Larry Brox and his office regarding the carbon tax election. Um, he was very receptive of talking to people. Yeah, I know that um, Miss Lynn Brooks, um, who also was not allowed inside today, um, she has made appointments and spoken to several conservative MPs um, that, that they've opened their doors and welcomed her to have a conversation um, and several other people. Um, so we don't seem to be having a problem with communication with the conservatives. We seem to be being roadblocked in communication with the NDP party and the Liberal Party. Could I get your name? I'm My sorry. name is Melissa Outwater. Okay, thank you. Because there were a few names on the notice. I wasn't yes. sure who you were. And I hate to ask this, but I'm sure you've seen by now, there's a video of somebody spitting on Marco Mendicino on Spark Street yesterday. I have to ask, I don't like to ask, but was that anyone affiliated with anybody that you guys know or anything like that? I'm unaware of that incident. I didn't arrive to Ottawa until this morning. So I'm sorry, I can't answer that for you. Neil? Uh, no, I didn't even know it happened. Okay. <laughs> and I mean, like, just to, just to be very clear, that is not something that any one of us condone. We don't condone that behavior from anybody. Um, so, you know, to whoever did that, like, please, let's be a little bit more respectful and a little bit more Canadian. Uh, you did apologize. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> is that it? I think that's it, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. Okay, just one more question. <laughs> like I said, to all the reporters that are out there, all of you that are watching here, why did you become a journalist? Put that in your mind and think about why you became a journalist. And on that, I'd like to say thank you very much, and uh, God bless, and have a wonderful weekend. And I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow. Thank you very much.